What goes around comes around, so I'm ready for the karma. Not loaded up, throw the hoodie over the armor. Growing through the hood, smoking presidential Obama. Fuck your bitch and kick her out of the crib. This is Sparta. And I'm a warrior, the last of a dying breed. Keep it a hundred, ain't enough. I've been a fucking G. Niggas, they envy me. I'm young, fine, getting paid. It feel like summer on the block, the way they throwing shade. But I ain't never pressed. Been a real nigga, never indirect. Welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while. I've been MIA. Y'all already know I'm gonna say like, comment, and subscribe. And today's topic is going to be about healthy boundaries as far as cutting people off. And I have a special guest today. My sister Treese is joining to talk about this topic. And before we even get into the topic, we're gonna get into her face because I am gonna get ready to start taking my makeup more serious. And I did slay her face today. Go ahead and step into the camera so they can see it. Go up to the camera, let them see. Period, go to the right, go to the left. Let them see it, sis. Yes, all right. So pretty soon I'm gonna probably have a website and stuff. I'm trying to build up a portfolio. So yes, Jazz slays faces too. I don't just cook and talk all the time, I slay. all right she's such a hater so um let me tell y'all how this topic came about uh, while i've been mia from youtube i have been dealing with a lot of crazy stuff with my family um as you all know i'm a libra okay everybody wants to call me sensitive and a cry baby very much so but i just wear my feelings on my sleeve and if i feel a way about something i'm gonna let you know that's just how it is and I have a lot of stuff with my family lately. Like, I always have my family's back. And when I need them to have my back, they don't have it. And I think I've just been kind of going through a... I'm going to call it a cleansing journey. As in cleansing people out of your life that are irrelevant, don't need to be there. Or they just don't ride for you the way you ride for them. Um, So, a lot of times I have been into her in the last couple months. Just about certain family members and them doing me dirty. And just trying to figure out how to let it go you know because i'll give my shirt off my back i get somebody my last and i guess the people that i was giving that energy to they wouldn't do the same for me so what you think about this topic i just feel like the energy needs to be reciprocated okay. on both ends you know but for me i don't have that problem i can cut a person off and won't speak to you tomorrow yeah i'm a little bit more emotionally attached than she is um so we're definitely two different people. She's very cold hearted, I, I like to say. I don't think I'm cold hearted, but. She is. She is, she's just I very, um, I feel like she has a, a more of a wall up when it comes to emotional stuff. And I feel like I need to put more of a wall up. So maybe not as high as hers is, but it does, I need to have a little bit tougher skin and I don't. Um, and I remember crying and, and saying like, why is my heart so big? Like, God, how do I, you know, because I don't want to be a, a evil person or a bitch or mean, but at the same time, I don't want nobody taking advantage of me either. And do people take advantage of me? No, they don't take advantage of and her. And why is that? Because <laughs> she mean. I'm not mean. Though. But she, she's, she's a sweetheart when she want to be. I'm a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. Very much a sweetheart. She, she can be a sweetheart. But, but you're not going to play with me. Yeah. So one of the issues I had, I'm gonna tell y'all about one of the issues I had that I had to vent about. Um, I got stranded, right? I was supposed to go to Chuck E. Cheese with my daughter and my best friend, and they were over capacity, which is crazy. You wanna say the family number? I'm not gonna say their name. I ain't gonna be disrespectful. You wanna say the relation? I'm not gonna even say the relation. Okay. They're not getting that type of camera time today, no. So I was stranded. Um, basically, we, we decided we was gonna go to Applebee's since Chuck E. Cheese was packed. So we had to wait an hour. So we decided we were gonna wait in the car. And I had my keys in the ignition, but my car wasn't on. And it had started getting really cold because mind y'all, it was winter actually. So my best friend was like, hey, go ahead, cut your heat on. Like, it's kind of cold in here. And I was like, oh yeah, you're right. So I go to cut the AC, not the AC, the heat. Nothing happens, like my lights blink, but my car don't cut on. So I'm panicking and I'm one of them girls that don't know nothing about cars. Okay, I'm gonna call my granddad, I'm gonna call my boyfriend, I'm gonna call somebody, I mean, cause I don't know nothing about no cars. So, um, I called my mechanic and he was like, oh, your car battery died, you need to get a jump. Now this happened to be one of those weekends, my boyfriend went to Newport News and he had just 
got to his destination. So he like maybe 50 minutes away from me. She's out of town. I was gone. But that kind of also got to do with karma. I mean, not for the baby to be stuck. What karma that got for me? When I was in the rain, y'all was asleep. My car battery. No, matter of fact, it wasn't even that. I locked the keys in the car. And you was at... Okay, that's not karma though because you weren't making any sense, and that wasn't just no, me. No, y'all was wasn't making no sense because y'all was asleep. But we was confused. That's different though. I'm not gonna leave you purposely leave you stranded. Yeah, I, I was tight. purposely left stranded. Yeah, I had me tight. My keys was locked in the car. The kids was out. It was raining. It was cold. Just bring your ass. We didn't know. Listen, we were asleep. I didn't. I was trying to figure out what was going on for real, for real. But go ahead. Back but, to the story. Yeah. So yeah, my boyfriend was gone. Well, he was far. She was gone. My stepmom was out of town. So I called my boyfriend and he had just got to his destination. He was like, oh, call so-and-so, you know, because they, they should have your back. You live down the street from them. I'm like, oh yeah, why don't I think about this? Right. This is a close family member to me. Yeah, so very close. I was like, all right, I call them. They don't answer. I call their girlfriend and their girlfriend answers. And I'm like, hey, is the person by you? I am stranded. I need to jump. They were like, oh, yeah, he's right here. We were arguing, so that's probably why he didn't answer. So he gets on the phone, and I'm explaining to him that I need a car jump, and I'm stranded. It's freezing cold, and, you know, also, my daughter's in the car. So they were basically like, they weren't coming. They were like, oh, I don't have a car. Now, the person does use their girlfriend's car, but their girlfriend told them that they could come give me a jump. They didn't want to use their girlfriend's car because they was mad at their girlfriend. And they were like, I don't know what to tell you. Find somebody with a car. Now listen, y'all, I ain't gonna cap. I thought of all the crying in the car. Matter of fact, I am gonna say who it is. I'm not gonna say their name. I'm not gonna say their name, but... I don't think you should. Fine. All right, I'm, gonna go, I'm not gonna be messy. Yeah, because that's... They real close blood related. I'm just gonna say that. So for me, I felt like they should have been there. The nigga didn't come, okay? So... Dang, you gotta say the... Drop the end bomb. Yeah, the nigga, because that's how I'm feeling about it. I still feel away. I have forgiven a person, but I really do feel away about the situation. Because when that person needed me, I was there for them. I let them drive my car to and from work. You know what I'm saying? And they also crashed my car. But what did I tell you? You're too nice. I am too nice. You're but you know what? Nice. I felt like because of the type of relationship we had. It don't matter. It would have went a little nice. different. But basically, they didn't come get me. Um, I really fell away. And my grandfather, who is 75, came out of the house in the freezing cold and gave me an... P.O.P. Yeah, he, he gave me a jump. So for me, that was kind of like distraught. That kind of made me start backing up from the person. But I wasn't completely done with the person yet. So I was telling her, like, dang, you know, I really felt a way about the situation. I don't, I, I see that I need to fall back and kind of remove myself from being around them. Because at this time, the person was coming to my house. You know, I was going to their house. They came over for dinner with their girlfriend. Like, we was real close. We've been close our whole life. So it just, it was painful for me. Last situation, like I said, this person crashed my car. Um, they got they crashed into another car in my car last year. And um, I will say they got the work on my car fixed. So they fixed the work on my car that day. But my car is two-tone. Two so my hood is burgundy and the inside of my car um, under the hood is burgundy. But my car is actually green. So they told me they were going to get it painted. They kept saying, oh, go get it priced and I'll get it painted. But I felt like I shouldn't have even got the car priced. For the paint job you should have did it because you don't crash my car but um after the situation with me being stuck i was like let me go ahead and just get the price so i can just get that over with i tell the person they're like oh i got no job right now but for me i felt like you're saying you don't have a job but this is what i don't like when you owe somebody something don't be doing other stuff or don't post the other stuff that you're doing because it's insulting like if you don't have money to get my car painted I shouldn't see you buying new furniture. I shouldn't see your girlfriend. Ice me out. Ice me out. Ice me out. Nigga, ice me out. You got money for that type of stuff, but you don't have money to get my car fixed. So after that, we kind of got into a really heated argument. And the person tried to tell me I owe them money from an apartment. It was just crazy. And it just got to the point that they were like, oh, well, take your money out for the money you owe me. And then they hung up the phone. I just feel like. If you owe somebody something, you shouldn't, that person shouldn't have to wait for you to be uh, like, yeah. I need it. Or if you have it, just be like, hey, I'm about to send you a couple of dollars here and there. 
and yeah take the initiative so, make them know you slowly know slowly pay them back so i really felt the way so um one thing i will say i like i said i am a sweetheart i have a really good heart but i have a very very nasty attitude if you get me to that point i have grown a lot in the last couple of years so i really try not to get to that point but when i'm emotional and you make me upset all my common sense goes out the window I have no like no common sense at all it's just rage and when i'm raged like that i think very evil and mean things and that's a flaw that i have that i know that i have to work on i can accept that and know that that's something i need to work on but it's bad okay i've, I've actually wished death on someone because i was so angry i, I really didn't mean that and i told you don't do that yes i didn't mean it so because the negativity that you spit into the universe will do it a re yeah, a reverse and it could be me. And come back to you. So we not even going to play them type of games. Yeah, which is very accurate. So when that situation happened, I was trying to get my boyfriend to drive to the person's house. I was like, you know, drive to their house. He was like, I'm not, to take it, yeah, I'm not doing to take that. It yeah, I was on some, I was on some um, straight ratchet, bullshit. I was on some bullshit shit. and I had time that day. And I be with the shits, but I was like, girl, no. Nah, yeah, I was tripping. I was, I was very irrational. And I, I really don't want no harm to come to this person because I do love them. They're my family. So, you know, so after that, I was just like, I brought myself out of character. I'm angry. And in that moment, I just said, I'm going to block them. So I blocked them from my phone. I took them off my social media because I, at first I just blocked them from my phone. But then every time I got on social media, I saw them buying shit for them and their partner. And it pissed me off even more. So um, I blocked them. But I was like really, really sad because like I said, I was very close with this person. And like I said, I would die for this person. I would take a bullet for them. And I think I saw in that moment that it's not the same. You wouldn't take a bullet for me. You wouldn't die for me. You don't give a fuck about my daughter to me because if you did you want to left us stranded and i just really came to her heartbroken like i was really really like i said it's a very close family member to me so you know but she was like you do too much you give too much don't give if you don't really have it and that's my problem sometimes a lot of times i might look like i have it all together but i don't none of us always have it together but i will give you my last if i feel like you need it because there's been times that she's given to me when i i really needed help so I want to pay it forward. You know what I'm saying? You can't always do that to people that's not going to. You can only pay it forward to people that's going to pay it forward back. You can't put into an empty pot and expect for it to come back to you or to somebody else. Because it's not going to go like that. So my question to you is, why do you think it's so hard for you to cut people off? Um, I think it's my emotional attachment. And I feel like it's because I'm not going to say I came from a broken home. Um, but my parents didn't raise me. My grandparents raised me. They did an excellent job. You know what I'm saying? They're very supportive. But I feel like um, there's just that piece of me that knew I was missing a feeling. So the people that are, are close to me, I want to keep them close to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I have an, I think I have detachment issues. But that has let people take advantage of me a lot. And it's just kind of at a point now where, did, like I said, the last couple months, I think has made me stronger. In that instant because when i say i'm not talking to this person i'm dead not talking to this person and i really feel that way and i when i speak to certain people i let them know i'm still not talking to this person and what I, one thing i don't like that family and friends do don't try to downplay somebody's feelings i don't like that she does that hey she does do that and it Listen, irritates me i don't because downplay nobody's feelings i do take heed into what people are saying but for me, it's just like, why we're all adults. Like, why do I have to dumb down what I'm saying? I hear what you're saying, but why do I have to dumb down what I got to say for you to hear what I'm saying? But see, that's not, I'm not saying dumb down. What I don't like is if you're telling somebody like, oh, I feel the way about this. Well, that's just how you feel. So with the instance that I'm talking about with my family member, I another family member wanted me to talk to them. And they're like, oh, it was just this one time that they left you stranded. And let me tell y'all why the the car situation- It takes one time. Right, the car situation as far as me being stranded is way more serious to me than the paint job. Cause I'm gonna get my car painted. But I don't know if y'all know that Virginia has one of the worst sex trafficking. This is one of the worst sex trafficking areas. And I personally, not even five months ago, had a situation where I could have been kidnapped, no lie. I was at the gas station and this guy was following me and luckily I was paying attention to my surroundings and the crazy things we always say what we're going to do in situations like that. I got on the phone with my grandma. I didn't even take this man's license plate. I didn't think about any of that stuff. And when I noticed he was still following me, I ran into the dollar store and the clerk ran out to try to get his license because I only had the first three letters. And 
when he she did that, the guy took off. But just that quick, I I wouldn't be here making this video right I'm now. Poking that nigga up. Yeah, and I have you know I have let me I got stuff in my car. You know, like I have um the taser that she has. She gave Vanna, gave me I'll be singing old Susanna. <laughs> I got pepper spray and I have a knife in my car, but you know, I'm five feet. I weigh like 189. I'm okay, and compared but to I'm a grown man, if they catch you off guard and snatch up, you really don't have much of a chance. So the car situation for me, luckily, like I said, I was stranded at a restaurant, but I could have been stranded on the side of the road. I could have been kidnapped. I could have been raped. Something could happen to my daughter. And I think I know people are like, oh, that's extreme. But I'm thinking the most extreme things can happen. happen. Yeah. So that's why for me that was very personal. But my family was like, oh, it was just that one time that they weren't there for you. Or, oh, it's just your car. Your car still works. Don't try to downplay how I feel about a situation. Because that's how I feel is how I feel. And they're wrong. I didn't get... Actually, I'm not going to lie. I was about to say I didn't get an apology. I did see an apology on my phone. But to be honest, I deleted it. Because I didn't even want to put my energy back into putting me back in that place. But yeah. Um, also, let's talk about borrowing money another situation that made me um fill away and step back from people i have borrowed money for people but my thing is if i'm gonna borrow money from you i'm gonna give you your money back i'm not gonna play them games you're not gonna have to chase me around and if, if in the rare case that i do forget i'm gonna say something to you you know what i'm saying because i have owe her money i'm like damn i supposed to been paid you this shit like i mean the way that i was taught by our other good sister who's not here right now when she used to help me out, first rule of thumb, do not give somebody something that you can't afford to give. Right. And I tell you that all the time. She does. So and when, I didn't listen. when I give you anything, I'm okay, I'm looking for it back, but I'm not about to hound you about it because that just let me know that you might not have it right then again. Yeah. Something might have came up, you might have bills. I had a little couple of dollars to give to you. Right. When you ready to return it, hopefully you return it. I have it. That is a that that is true. You and our good sister tell me that, so that's why I don't, I'm not. If, if I don't got it to give, I'm not giving. I let somebody borrow some money from me, and they told me there was a specific day we were gonna give it to me. Now I fell on hard times, and I told them when I gave it to them, I really don't have it like that. But I don't want you to be in a situation where you're fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I got a heart. The time came that they were supposed to give it to me. I didn't hear from them. But I'm like, all right, here's my thing. Communication is key. You know what I'm saying? If you don't have it, let me know. Hey, listen, I know I said blah, 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 but I really don't have it. I literally felt like I was chasing this person around. They stopped answering my phone calls. They weren't answering my text oh, messages. me for about two, two weeks. Now. Yeah, like what is going on? It turned into a month. And then their birthday came up and they posting their cash. Up. It's my birthday. They post my cash up. So I put some eyeballs. Like how you asking my people to give you some money, but you haven't paid me my money back. And it just got like real, like oh, I'm crazy. Give you your funky ass dollars. Yeah, like what? And I was like, gonna give it to you when I felt like you know what I'm saying. And for me, that once again, crazy. it was a fa a close family member. But I was like, damn, like how you? Them dollars wasn't funky when I gave it to you. Yeah, like mm -hmm. how you how you act like that? But you needed it. You know what I'm saying? And I came through for you when I told you I really didn't have it. One thing, I'm a mother first. Okay. What was the last line you said? Huh? What was the last line you said? I'm a mother first. No, that was. I'm talking about the line before that. Girl, what I said, I ain't really have it like that. And I gave it. But what I told you. Stop doing that. I know. I have, like I said, I have a big heart. It's too big. And it be costing you. It do be costing me. And I be, it's, it's, I be crying in the I, car. I, I, I learned that a long time ago. Because when I first moved out here to VA, a close relative of mine came out here for my daughter kindergarten graduation. And of, of course, you know that was years ago because... Yo, your kids yeah, moving like, on up. She <laughs> in the seventh grade now. So she came out here with her kids. She flew out here. And at the time, I didn't know she had got a one way ticket out here. She was supposed to fly back home. So come time for her to leave, she like, it wasn't even time for her to leave. She, out of nowhere, she was just like, oh, I got a inspection eight um inspection a section eight inspection and i gotta um i gotta go back home real quick so you know she's like yo you think you can help me get a rental car you think our other family out here can help help me get a rental car everybody else was like no the fuck no <laughs> my little dumb ass at the time because my heart was big and i used to just jump head first into things and ask questions later because i felt like for family it's only a phone call and if you right there and i got if I can extend my hand, 
why not do it? So I helped to get the um, rental car, mm -hmm. not knowing the full details of the um, rental car agreement. She had got um, an in-town rental car and took it all the way to Georgia where she was living at the time. And it was all these extra fees because, you know, with Avis, an in, uh, in-town rental car, you can only drive for so many miles. Oh, yes, so yes, to yes, drive yes. out from Virginia to Georgia, that's mad miles. So I was being charged for um, gas. Oh, it was under your name. Yes. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she couldn't get it because... She only she didn't have a return ticket, a return flight. Okay. So I had to help her because I was a VA resident to get it. So, mm -hmm. you know, no none of our other um siblings wanted to help her. So I extended my hand to help her because that was who she, she was. Yeah, okay. I feel you. So, um long story short, my my account ended up getting overdrafted. I didn't know how I was going to um, pay my rent to keep a roof over my daughter's head at the time. Like, I didn't know nothing. Like, good thing God put certain people in your life for a reason and not only just a season. Our good sister helped, helped me get a new account because that account was, like, done. <laughs> so, I had to rebuild, start from ground zero when I was just starting from ground zero. And I know that and made you that feel good. And that taught me a valuable lesson because it wasn't about me in that moment. It was more so about you didn't care about my child's livelihood. Mm -hmm. And I extended my hand, a hand that didn't even have that much reach at that moment. And you knew that. So I felt right. like not only did you take advantage of me, but you jeopardized so much yeah, like crazy. what if our sister wasn't in my life and like i would have it would have been no way for me to um to pay my rent <laughs> at that time i feel you yeah that's Cause, crazy because granted i could have got money orders but like my account and my payroll check was attached so we had to have direct deposit and they just took that shit right on they, they would have took it right on out of there if it would have continued to go there yeah. See, that's so, crazy. People just, and then uh, it was like when I reached out to you about the extra fees and stuff, you it was just like, oh, I'm gonna pay you the money when I when I can or oh no 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 or, that's, what, that's what energy that or, I'm talking about right there or because you got crazy with me or snazzy about it, I'm gonna pay you when I feel like it. See, that's what I'm talking so, about. So, the way I used to be, I would have been on the first thing smoking it to um Georgia. She would have caught these hands. But the person that I was evolving to be. Preach! Was. I'm going to let God take care of you. Because okay. you're going gonna to have way more losses than I'm going to have. Yes, God be saving y'all sometimes. He saved God everybody be saved. He, that crossed me. Because I'm not really the one that you want to cross. That's but that's crazy. a whole nother story. Yeah, because she crazy. So, <laughs> But what I learned also, my mom, my um stepmom tells me all the time healthy boundaries um that's why i said you have to create healthy boundaries so my energy now is um i'm not gonna pick up my phone if i see my phone ringing and i feel like it's gonna be something that's gonna fuck my energy up like i'm having a good day i'm not gonna answer the phone Same if you yeah if you that's ring my doorbell first of all don't come to my house without um asking um only certain people can do that but if i see you outside my door and i feel like you're gonna fuck up my energy i'm not answering the doorbell I don't Healthy answer anyway. If you come boundaries. to my door, I'll be like, keep on knocking, but your money coming in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and on this, this comes I'll towards be on the couch, friends, too, I'll be though. on the couch flicking the remote, act like I And look, I'll be watching the camera, the ring. I'll be ding dong. I'll be like, what? Not getting an answer. <laughs> and another thing that I do is I overexert myself. Um, I'm not Dr. Phil, okay? I... I don't know why my friends like to vent to me and my family. That's fine. I like to, I'll be a listening ear because sometimes I need a listening ear. And I think sometimes I personally assume when somebody asks me for advice that they're going to take it. But these niggas don't be taking it. They just be wanting to talk and go back to whatever situation that they got going on. And I feel like if I care more about the situation than you do, I need to stop caring about the situation. Um, so that's something else I, I had to learn about this year. I had 
people come up to me and I'm talking about like fucked up situations with people that that be like run for And they stay, but then they're asking me for advice and you're pulling me, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting sucked into what you got going on and you're asking me for help and then I give you help or some advice and you flip the script on me. Nah, we're not doing that. And see, that's another thing. That's why sometimes I mind my business. Sometimes I just don't know how to mind my business because I feel like I mind my business, but once you insert me in the business... Then it's the hour business. Right. So now you're going to hear my mouth because you shouldn't have never inserted me in your business when I was trying to mind my business. That's why um, people don't like when I do speak. Because normally I mind my business and I stay out of it till you insert me in your business. Because I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know. That's, yeah, with certain stuff. So. But other than that, I'm not giving you no advice because I feel like, prime example, you got a homegirl. You see her dude out. And you go back and be like, hey, shorty, you up? I just saw such and such out on a date with somebody else and it wasn't you. Mm -hmm. Now, it's going to be one of two things. You're lying. He said he wasn't there. Not even that. <laughs> it's going to be, she going to go back and say, such and such told me that she oh, saw yeah. you out. And Breaking girl code. That and leave. Or she's going to tell him. Such and such saw you out and stayed. And now he feel a way Wait, about look, you. Right. Yeah, and I owe this bitch. So, I'm on my business. If I know that me telling you is not going to move them feet, you can forget it. You're going to have to find out on your own. Call it breaking girl code or whatever you want to call it, but I'm not going to insert myself in unnecessary situations. And then I got to get out of character. Yeah. Um, so, I learned that um too. Also, I learned... It ain't nothing to cut that bitch off. What they say? Snip, snip, ho. This go to friends too. Um, I don't, I don't do you drama. Say that, but it's not that easy for you. <laughs> you know, with certain stuff. But when I say friends, I feel like I'm about to be 26. Okay, I'm about to have a four year old in two weeks. I'm getting back into school. I'm trying to take beauty a little bit more serious. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to stack these coins so that my daughter is well. Take set up and out. established before she even reached teenage years you know what i'm saying so that's my mindset now and i think i really kind of just got to this point where i'm taking that stuff more serious most of my friends don't have kids some of my friends have kids some don't and y'all want to party and stuff and i'm not saying don't party because this is when you're supposed to party if you don't have no kids you don't have no real responsibilities for real party sis leave it up but don't be mad because i can't do that and i'm telling you like Party and stack your money. Yeah, Party I'm a mommy first, so I can't do. Bread, like, yeah, I can't do some of that party, stuff. And if you feel the way, if you don't got no bread, you shouldn't be partying. Like if the bread that you're spending is the party, and you got nothing in your pocketbook at the end of the night or pockets, brushes, stay your ass home. Get to that you're bed. You're doing something wrong. You're backwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, I um. Just for the simple fact of stuff like that, I, I feel myself different from people because I feel like we go in different directions. And that's not to say that all of your friends have to be on the same stuff, but I want us all to be trying to elevate our lives. And if I feel like you're not trying to elevate your life, and like I said, I'm getting sucked into whatever you have going on, we shouldn't hang out. Um, you can love people from a distance, and you can cut people off and not have an issue with them. And sometimes separation means elevation. God removes certain people out of your lives. So that way you can elevate because when certain people are in your lives, they block the blessings Stunt that God growth. has mm -hmm. intended for you to receive. And he's not going to give it to you until those people are removed from your circle because some people are not meant to grow with you. Right. They're there for a season. And not for... What? A oh, for... A no, they're there for a reason. They just... A it lesson, happens to be that. But... Yeah. It's just a seasonal thing. It's not forever. We all oh, have okay. forever friends, forever family members, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times we don't. We outgrow people. They outgrow. Mm -hmm. People fall out. People, you know, it's life. And I think that's why I needed someone to come. I'm sorry, y'all. Give me some scissors so I can get you out of my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, y'all. These lashes is ears. I got some I individuals. You pulling in. no lashes no, right I was now. scratching it and it just came off. Uh, but it was irritating me. It might be my mm -hmm. eyes. I ain't going to cut you off right now. Girl, you ain't coming off. But he about to get cut off, though. He getting cut off. She's stuck with me forever. We family. And once um your brother put this nice old ring on my hand, I'm stuck with you. Oh, he's stuck. No, you're stuck with me, too. Because, girl, I know how to 
put the phone on the side. That's my favorite That's thing. That's all right. Oh, yeah, because we fall out, too. That's my favorite thing. I love my we phone. We fall out, and they be mad. Put that man on silent. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me, let me. I was just talking about how I like my phone on silent, so let me put my phone back on silent. I only have my phone off of silent because this person right here was talking about my phone. No, I don't know. It's on silent. Yeah, because if I'm, if I'm dying... Or something, you know. I mean, somebody <laughs> clearly the the other motherfuckers that was in my circle ain't accountable. I can't count on. Well, them. you know, if I was here though, you know that. Ain't nah, you you've no had my back from day one. We can only talk about that. But that's very true. And that's another situation with that same person. Cause you got motherfuckers in your house that's not doing what they supposed to do. But we ain't gonna go there. That's a whole nother video. But that's me as a mother, as a person. Like, I might seem cold hearted and all that good stuff. I am. I am. Very, but she has a heart. I'm not gonna say I'm cutthroatish, but I'm just not here for the bullshit. Like I done been through so much. Like I, I just know how to bob and weave, like okay. and roll with the punches. And I need to be a little bit more like that. Um, I wouldn't have been so hurt and crying in the car. But I gotta thank my sibling for that too. Like, cause without her, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I kind of like. She kind of like shaped me. To the person that I needed see, to see siblings. You see what I'm saying? But they ain't shit. Some of them are. So that's kind of what's been going on, y'all. I have been meaning to do this video, but at the time that I wanted to do the video, all of the drama that I was going through was kind of fresh, and I don't feel like I was being clear-headed. I think I'd have been just speaking from a angry place. Um, I'm not angry, like I said. I have forgiven this person. You know they say forgive, don't forget. I don't know how to do that. Um, I forgive side up. Yeah, she's petty. I will forgive. I just I'm a Leo. have to distance myself. We ain't gonna go so, to the petty extreme. If y'all have, you know, dealt with something similar, you know, y'all understand. And But I also feel like to understand cutting somebody off, it's you have to understand mental development, social development, and all that good stuff. Yeah, and people not raised the same. And upbringing. And you know what our good sister says to me? This is something that she said that is really true. Stop expecting people to be how you are to them, to you. That's what messes us up a lot. Yeah, like we assume, yeah, our expectations. We're assuming, like, I know I got this person back, so they run up, I'ma run up. You know what I'm saying? But what about you running up on somebody down on the day in the wind? Well, where you what happened? Casper, where'd you go? Yo, sis, you got me? They said they about to come through and spray the whole block up. Hell no! And they gone. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> it, was a, um, it was a video floating around on social media. Some random dude, he was talking on his phone. He's like, yeah, that's why I chub bitch. And then he was just talking. And then some random dude was getting money out the ATM. And then he was like, yeah, I'm here with my man right now. Hey, bro, you got me? <laughs> he was oh, no. like, what? I don't know this man. <laughs> I don't know who that is. And yeah. Then, and then he got back on the phone with the dude. He was like, yeah, me and my man, we here right now. Dude looking like, like yeah, man, you got me? He like, yeah, we going to wait and just see what dudes look like <laughs> when they get here. When dudes mm -hmm. pulled up, son ran and left him. Because he was like, yo, he was like, which one of y'all was? And then the dude that was on the phone, he pointed to the, to the random guy. Oh, yeah, he's trifling. So, I was like, yo, that's crazy. Yeah, that's some trifling stuff. But, um... But it was a joke. It was a prank. That ain't funny. I don't think that's funny. But, yeah, ex expectations. Um, I... And that's a big flaw that I have, too. I expect people to be like me. Or, yeah, stop. But everybody, like you said, everybody not raised the same. I was raised by grandparents. You know, they old school. I mean, my grandparents was I was old raised school, by my so. sister. Thankfully, and I was raised by wolves. Thankfully, I think me being raised by them, I'm a little bit more mature and more It's Also, my daughter, too. So, I guess I expect people to handle situations the way I do. or But it, it just don't be like that. So, my expectations be getting me fucked up, too. It's not always the person. So, I can't just hold the person accountable. I have to remember, like, girl, you assuming. And you know what they say about assuming? You make an ass out of you and me. So, I'm going to stop doing that, too. Anything else? I don't got nothing else because I don't have that problem. I'm going to cut you off. If I say I ain't talking to you, I ain't talking to you. And I don't expect family members to put you off for me because I still ain't talking to you. Yeah, I feel you. So my block list is very hefty right now. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, Jenk Jenkins a little hefty. Um, my social media, I have, like I said, I block people. And i just been really staying in my bubble. And it's been working for me. Like, my little tight-knit bubble is peaceful. You know what I'm saying? I don't have no home drama. You know, my friends don't be having no drama. And it's just more peaceful than where I'm sucking in everybody else's drama. Or I'm letting people hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm having a bat, but they don't have mine. And like I said, you know, it's just unhealthy. So set healthy boundaries, y'all. That's all I got to say. Um, and if you had any similar experiences, you know, comment below. Let us know how you deal deal with things like that or have dealt with it. Uh, what are some steps that you've taken? What are some advice that you have? You know, what do you do when you know that it's unhealthy and you need to cut ties? Comment below. Like I said, once again, thank you guys for tuning into my channel. Thank you for my special guest, Therese. You're welcome. And um, until my next topic, y'all be breezy.